Um, thank you. <coughs> so one area where there seems to be a lot of noise is um, macroeconomic forecasting and you see it a lot in a similar way to the, the press's reaction to polling. You see a lot of journalists who maybe don't know that much picking over, you know, the job, monthly jobs reports and things like that. And you see that not just in the US, but um, in the UK as well with, you know, the GDP report and things like that. And I was just wondering if that's something you were thinking about looking at. You were talking about moving away from polls and it, it's something where there is a, a space for good um, public journalism. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought about, uh, so for example, you had, what was the GDP growth in the last quarter here? It was like plus 0.3% or something. Um, you know, the margin of error on that calculation is about plus or minus a point or a point and a half, I think, of GDP, right? So it might very well that we actually are in a double, in a triple dip recession here. You barely are even, you know, it's probably a, a 60, 65% chance or something if you account for the confidence interval here. But very, very few papers uh, are able to, are willing, I suppose, to explain that result to people. Um, and the same thing happens in the US where you'd have, we have monthly jobs reports that come out every month. Um, the margin of error on those is about plus or minus 200,000 or excuse me, 150,000 jobs or so. But if the prediction is that you'll have 80,000 jobs comes out as 70,000 instead, really a very good prediction relative to how well it normally does. People are like, oh, it's a disaster, you know. What went wrong really influences the coverage as a result. Um, I think one problem that, uh, that uh, economics has, I'm an economic major, my major is, my degree is in economics from University of Chicago, but, um, but I think they, they, uh, they want to seem as though they're being very scientific and precise, so when they admit how, how little we really know about it, not just how well the economy will do going forward, but about where it is, where it is even now, given the complexity of even measuring the economy, um, any calculation, especially numbers like, like GDP, where you have to accumulate a number of individual measures into one big bundle, um, those are really quite imprecise in a lot of ways. And I think uh, economists are embarrassed, to, <laughs> would be embarrassed to know how, how inaccurate that data can be and how inaccurate their, their forecasts can be as a result. Um, but I definitely have um, thought about expanding 538's coverage into economics. Um, to help people visualize this data in different ways and not overperceive the importance of, of any one report. Um, but yeah, I mean, time and time again, um, economists, you can look actually at how accurate they are as compared to how accurate they claim to be. And despite having many, many years of history saying we've made really no improvement over the past 40 years in forecasting the job rate or GDP or inflation, people keep thinking they get better and better and keep being surprised, but it's kind of inevitable, I suppose, that we'll keep having these problems. The economy is one of those things where, uh, where even though you might get better techniques, the economy itself is growing more complex all the time, so it's kind of a moving, a moving target, really. Um, in the U.S., we just had a, an upcoming revision to GDP where they said, well, we're not going to account for... Um, for, we weren't accounting properly for intellectual property, and so we're going to revise GDP upward by, by 3%. Um, you know, that's tens of billions of dollars worth of economic activity that was missing before based on a change in, in assumptions. So that's a little bit worrying, I suppose, that things that we don't really know with that much precision where we really are. 